As epidemiologists, one of our main objectives is to investigate relationships between exposures and health in populations. However, once identified, our challenge is to determine whether this relationship represents a causal pathway. In other words, does the exposure truly cause the outcome? If we're not careful, we may incorrectly conclude that causal association between two factors exists. This occurs because the association we observe is distorted by another factor that we have not considered. We call this distorting factor a confounding variable. Confounding is one of the most important problems in epidemiologic studies because it results in spurious or distorted associations being observed. A classic example of confounding involves the investigation of an association between carrying matches and lung cancer where researchers concluded that people who carry matches are more likely to develop lung cancer. This is, of course, not the correct root cause. The factor not considered here is smoking status. Smokers are more likely to carry matches and more likely to develop lung cancer. But since smoking status wasn't considered, it appeared as though carrying matches was the exposure that led to a higher likelihood of developing lung cancer. So we would say that smoking status confounds the relationship observed between carrying matches and developing lung cancer. As epidemiologists, we must carefully consider what factors might potentially confound results. And when an association is observed, we must assess whether a confounding relationship exists. To do this, we consider whether a potential confounding variable meets three criteria. The confounding variable must, one, be associated with exposure of interest, two, be associated with the outcome of interest, and three, not be a result or caused by the exposure of interest. This final criterion is about temporality. In other words, which of these exposures came first? If the factor in question meets all three of these criteria, it is considered a confounder. It can be helpful to draw the factors of interest out in what's called a causal map and then work through the three criteria. A causal map is a bit like a timeline where time moves from left to right. We put the exposures on the left and the outcome on the far right. We then consider whether the potential confounding variable would sensibly occur before or after the exposure and place it on the map accordingly. Let's try an example. Say we're interested in the relationship between getting the flu vaccine and the likelihood of getting the flu in the same season. Now we're concerned that participants' occupation, such as being a health professional, might confound this relationship. On our causal map, we place occupation furthest left on the diagram because it precedes getting a flu vaccine. Now we investigate for confounding by first asking, is the potential confounder associated with the exposure? In this example, yes, health professionals are more likely to get the flu vaccine to decrease their chances of getting the flu. Next we ask, is the potential confounder associated with the outcome? In this example, yes, health professionals are more likely to get the flu because they are exposed to high numbers of sick people. Finally, we ask, is the potential confounder caused by or a result of the exposure? In this case, the answer is obviously no. One does not become a health professional because they receive the flu vaccine. Therefore, we can conclude that occupation is a confounding variable of this relationship. Confounding can be a major source of bias in epidemiologic studies, bias that leads to spurious conclusions about a given relationship. Therefore, it's crucial that we critically evaluate the associations we observe using the three criteria for a confounding variable and causal mapping to ensure that we are aware of potential confounders and address them within our studies.